uh, you must be practicing during the vacations at home. So as promised, I will be sharing with you this video, especially for discussing the paper which was conducted before the winter vacations. I have uh, observed certain points while checking the question paper. So it would be better if you listen to each and everything which is uh, communicated through this video. And I hope all these points would help you in uh, making your score better and uh, inculcating um, some more confidence while writing. Because uh, during examination, uh, how you write, how you express, and uh, how you answer a particular question makes a difference. So let us begin. So in the question paper, there are four sections, section A, B, C, and D. In section A, there are 20 questions of one mark each. You must have noticed that some of the questions were of uh, multiple choice questions, and some questions were filling the blanks type and some of the questions were very short answer questions. So in this video, I will be sharing with you the observations of first 20 questions. So section A, we are starting. So question number one to 10 in section A are multiple choice questions. And it says, select the correct option. So here we go. Question number one, which of the following number is not a perfect square? You see, dear students, in the chapter squares and square roots, uh, there is a section where the properties of perfect squares have been listed. So for, uh, and many a times it has been observed that in examination, some of the question or the other question has been asked from that particular section. If you remember, I shared with you a video also in which we have done some exploration on properties of perfect squares. So here for doing this question, we have to just use one property. And the property is that if we have uh, numbers ending with 8, 7, 3 or 2, they will not be perfect squares. So quickly by looking at the observations and choices given over here, we will eliminating choice A, B and D and the correct answer will be choice C. That is 5, 4, 7, 8 because you see that here 8 is in the end. So units digit you have observed. So it's the property says numbers ending with 2, 3, 7 and 8. They are not perfect squares. So by quickly looking at the choices, you have to eliminate the wrong one and write the correct answer. Okay, now coming to the second one. In second question, very simple question. So such questions are like bonus questions because uh, here it will hardly take a second to make a correct choice. So three upon five raised to the power zero. You know that the concept of zero exponent we have done for any non-zero rational number a, we define a raised to the power zero is equal to one. So what is the correct choice? Correct choice would be choice C, that is one. Now coming to the third one, very interesting. This is also a very simple question. So here uh, it is testing that if you have uh, studied the laws of uh, rational exponent. So here 2 by 3 raised to the power minus 5 into 5 by 7 raised to the power minus 5. You see we are using that if x and y are greater than 0, they are rational numbers and a is the exponent, then x raised to the power a into y raised to the power a is equal to x into y raised to the power a. So looking at it, we can quickly jump to the right choice. And the right choice for this particular question would be B. So 2 by 3 into 5 by 7 raised to the power minus 5 is the correct answer. OK, moving on to the next question now. If two quantities x and y vary inversely with each other, then you have to make the correct uh, 
choice. So here it, it is given x by y remains constant, x plus y remains constant, x minus y remains constant, or x y remains constant. So you remember this is a simple mathematical relationship between two quantities which vary inversely. We know that the product of x and y should be constant. Now, the second result of uh, this particular chapter is when they vary directly, then what could have been the answer? The answer would be x upon y remains constant. But for this particular question, if you see, if two quantities x and y vary inversely, then x into y is constant. So what is the correct choice? D is the correct answer. Come to question number five. Here you notice that in question number five, it's a multiple choice question, but there is a choice. Okay. So there might, uh, uh, there is a possibility that in even in MCQs, you get a choice in a particular question. So see that which, which choice you are attempting. Uh, let us see the first one. Factorize form of uh, x square minus 3x minus 54. So you have to simply see the four you know, expressions which are given over here and whichever is resulting in x square minus 3x minus 54. So we see that if you multiply this x minus 9 into x plus 6, what do you get? You get x square plus 6x minus 9x. That means uh, minus 3x and minus 9 into 6 is minus 54. So B is the correct answer for question number 5. Now see the choice question. Here it is asked, which of the following is an algebraic identities? So you write down all the algebraic identities at one place. And uh, while practicing also, while revising also, make sure that you have learned all of them. So here, if you notice that uh, D part, you just look into the D part. It is the formula for A minus B whole square. What is A minus B whole square? It is a square minus 2ab plus b square. So this is the correct choice. So your, uh, you know, uh, attention should directly go to the right one. Rather than, you know, you, you are reading all other choices. It should be like you are just observing the right thing first. Okay, now coming to the next one. Uh, this is interesting. Uh, question number six, that is, 48x is uh, 29 square minus 19 square, and we have to find the value of x. So here you require a little bit of calculations. But you can do it orally also. Uh, let us see that. So this, uh, this question, 48x is equal to 29 square minus 19 square, and we have to find the value of x. Now observe the right hand side. Which algebraic identity we can apply here? We can apply a square minus b square. What is a square minus b square? a minus b into a plus b. So right hand side me kya aega? 29 minus 19 into 29 plus 19. What is 29 minus 19? And what is 29 plus 19? 48. So we have the equation 48x is equal to 10 into 48. Now we can find x. x will be equal to 10 into 48 divided by 48. 48 gets cancelled. So what is the answer? x is equal to 10. Let us discuss uh, this let us discuss, uh, let's discuss uh, this question. 48x is. So here you have seen that in question number six, after solving correct choices, uh, A part, that is 10. You could have done this orally also, like 29 square minus 19 square, using the formula A square minus B square. 29 minus 19 into 29 plus 19. And if you can do such calculation in mind, then it will help you in saving your time. Okay, moving on to the next one now. The next question is here, which of the following is a polynomial? Interesting. So here you know 
uh, basic testing is that uh, you remember the definition of a polynomial. So if you see, just observe carefully how we are going to do this. Uh, let us discuss this question now. In this question, it has been asked that out of the given four uh, expressions, we need to see uh, which one is a polynomial. So for that, first we need to recall what is a polynomial. So you know that uh, an algebraic expression in which the exponent of the variable, they are non-negative integers, is called a polynomial. So I'm writing here for all of you to recall what is a polynomial. So polynomial kya hota hai? Polynomial ek uh, aisa algebraic expression hota hai jisme exponent of the variable jo hai wo non-negative integer hai. Meaning wo negative nahi hoga or fraction bhi nahi hoga. So an algebraic expression in which the exponents of the variable are non-negative integers. Very important baat hai ye. When you know this, then you can easily find which of the given expressions is a polynomial. Is called a polynomial. So we will be using the definition and we'll get to know that which of the given expressions is a polynomial. So let us consider this first one. 5y raised to the power minus 1 by 2 plus 6. Qu quickly by looking at it, we see that here the x So here also you will see that exponent is a fraction, so it is not a polynomial. So we will not choose this option. Okay, let us see this one. 4 upon y plus 10. 4 upon y meaning how you can write this? It is equal to 4 into y raised to the power minus 1 plus 10. And again, you will notice that exponent here is a negative integer. So it should be non-negative integer. So this is also not a polynomial. So we are left with only one. It is 3x squared plus 5x plus 2. Yes, by looking at it, we can directly say it's a polynomial. Here you see the variable is x. And in the first term, the exponent is 2. In the second term, it is one and the constant term is two so we say that this is the right answer so five by raised to the power minus half plus six is not a polynomial three square root y plus five y square plus seven is also not a polynomial four upon y plus ten is also not a polynomial so here three x square plus five x plus two is a polynomial so what is the correct choice? So the correct choice for this question number 7 is B part. That is 3x square plus 5x plus 2. Moving on to the next one now. If you see the next question, question number 8, it says the bisectors of two adjacent angles of a parallelogram intersect at an angle of 30 degrees. 45 degrees, 60 degrees, or 90 degrees. So if you remember the answer, it is fine and the basic result. But if you do not, then you can quickly do the calculations and get to the right answer. Okay, let us now discuss another interesting question from the paper. It says the bisectors of the adjacent angles of a parallelogram intersect at an angle of, you are given four choices, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 90 degrees. 
So first of all, we will try to make the figure the bisectors of the adjacent angles of a parallelogram. So you know that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram when both pairs of opposite sides are parallel to each other. So here we have A, B, C, D as a parallelogram. So we see A, B is parallel to C, D and A, D is parallel to B, C. Now, the bisectors of the adjacent angles of a parallelogram. So I hope you know what are adjacent angles. So here, if you look at this figure, this angle A and angle B are adjacent to each other. Similarly, angle B and angle C is another pair of adjacent angles. Angle C and angle D is another pair of adjacent angles. And angle D and angle A is the fourth pair of adjacent angles. So we can uh, take up any one pair. So let us uh, try to make the figure by taking the pair angle A and angle B, which is an adjacent angle pair. So here it is given the bisectors of the two adjacent angles of a parallelogram. So bi bisector meaning I am now making a bisector Similarly, here, I'm making a bisector. Bisector meaning it is dividing this angle uh, into two equal parts. So if I write here, the measure of this angle is X. Uh, the measure of the other part of the angle is also X. So here I have taken L as the bisector. And for this, this M is the bisector. This Ray. So this uh, indicates here if this is y, so this is also y, right? So here in this parallelogram A, B, C, D, we know that angle A plus angle B equals 180 degrees. You know here angle A and angle B, they are making a pair of co-interior angles. If we see A, B is parallel to B, C and AB is transversal. So what is the sum of angle A and angle B? It will be equal to 180 degrees. So what is the sum of X and Y then, which is in this triangle? If I say mark here O, yes, half of angle A plus half of angle B will be 90 degrees. So that means, can I say X plus Y is 90 degrees. So tell me now what will be this angle? Angle AOB? Perfectly fine. So angle AOB will be? Yes, we will be using the angle sum property in the triangle. It will be equal to 180 degrees minus X plus Y. So that is 180 degrees minus 90 degrees. So answer is 90 degrees. So quickly by looking at it also, you can uh, get a clue because in the examination, you are not going to write down these steps because it's a multiple choice question. Just for the sake of uh, explanation, I have done this for you. But this question might come for two marks also. So you should know the steps also. So here what we have done, we have drawn the bisectors and then we have assumed that the bisectors are intersecting at the point O. Then uh, we have taken that uh, angle A plus angle B is 180 because they are making a co pair of co-interior angles. Then half of A plus half of B will be 90. So from the figure, X plus Y will be equal to 90. So then we can see that in triangle A, O, B. So here, here, here we have to write down triangle A, O, B in triangle A, O, B. Angle AOB is equal to 180 minus X plus Y. So that is 180 minus 90. So the answer is 90 degrees. So quickly tell me what is the right choice. Our right choice is this T part. I hope it is. So you have seen okay, that for this particular this question, the correct answer is D part. Okay, now coming to the next one. Distance of a point 3, 4 from the Y axis. So here, if you see... If you consider any point, then uh, distance from the y-axis is 
the value of abscissa. So abscissa units. So we say, so here, for this particular uh, uh, question, answer would be A part, that is three units. Now, suppose here the question is, find the distance of this point from the x-axis. Then you will be using the other result that distance of a point from the x-axis is the ordinate. Very nice. So th then in that case, the answer would have been four units. So you have to remember these results and you can directly use these results for making a correct choice. Coming to the next one, question number 10. The number of vertices in a tetrahedron. So in your chapter mensuration, uh, you have studied various three-dimensional shapes. So here, uh, tetrahedron has been asked. So it can be a pyramid, it can be some uh, square pyramid, or it can be a pentagonal pyramid, or it can be a prism. So you have to uh, remember and recall vertices, faces, and edges of all the three-dimensional shapes which you have studied in that chapter. Now coming to question number 10. So number of vertices, a tetrahedron has so tetra meaning four four faces so if you see this is the shape of a tetrahedron now you can count the number of vertices so you can see that there are four vertices so the correct choice is c part that is four now coming to the next question so question number 11 to 15 is uh, filling the blanks type so first part is the difference between squares of two consecutive numbers is equal to their, so you remember this property, that it is equal to their sum. Uh, in case you are not able to recall that, you can quickly, you know, verify by taking up uh, two, three such, you know, values and you will come to the right answer. That is another way. Okay, question number 12. If two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the interior angles on the same side of transversal are, you use this result for proving that two lines are parallel. Yes, you are right. The answer is supplementary. Okay, question number 13. A parallelogram having its adjacent sides equal. So, you know, we did this in the definition part. So a parallelogram whose adjacent sides are equal is called a rhombus. Good. So you should remember the definitions of parallelograms, special parallelograms. It can be like for square, for rectangle. You have written all those definitions. So it would be nice if you write down at one place and at the time of revision, you must go through them. Okay, question number 14. The point at which the x-axis and the y-axis intersect on the Cartesian plane is very simple. Answer is origin. So last question in this uh, filling the blanks type. If a card is drawn at random from a well-shuffled deck of 52 cards, then the probability of drawing card to be queen. Okay, how many queens are there in a deck of cards? Yes, there are four queens and total cards. 52 so you can do this calculation 4 upon 52 what's the answer? yes you are right answer is 1 by 13 so there are five these are spilling the blank types questions in the paper so i hope you have uh, done all of them correctly coming on to next that is question number 16 this is uh, evaluate cube root of 16 into 32 uh, for this particular question, I have deliberately recorded this video because I have observed that when you are writing the answers, then where to place this cube root sign and how to do the calculations, be careful. So please uh, go through the solution and check whatever answers you have written in your sheet. Okay, dear students, let us discuss this question. Evaluate cube root of 16 into 32. Very simple question. It's a very short answer question. So you can write 16 as 4 into 4. And you can write 32 as 4 into 8. So let us see what we get. So this is cube root of 4 into 4 into 4. And 8 can be written as 2 into 2 into 2. 
I hope now you have got the answer. So from the triplet, 4 into 4 into 4, we will take out 1. And from 2 into 2 into 2, we will take out 2. So what is cube root of 16 into 32? Answer is 8. Right. So here uh, we have observed this question, how we have to solve it. Okay, now coming on to the next one. So next question is question number 17. We have to divide 39 x is to the power 4 by root 13 x square. Here also I have observed that while you are writing the answer, then like here it is root 13 x square. Observe carefully. Do you observe this square root sign above this x square? It's not like that. So when you are writing, do it consciously that you write square root 13 separately and put some space and then write x square. Just observe this solution and then check the answers which you have written in your answer sheet. Uh, let us discuss uh, this question now. We have to divide 39 x raised to the power 4 by root 13 x square. So let us write it down. 39 x raised to the power 4 has to be divided by root 13 x square. So here you can see that we can write 39 as 13 into 3. So this is into x raised to the power 4. And in the denominator, it is root 13 into x square. Now you see here, root 13 into root 13 is 13. So we will be using this. So this is equal to, so in the numerator at the place of 13, we would be writing root 13 into root 13 into 3 into x raised to the power 4 divided by root 13 into x square. So from the numerator and denominator, now we can cancel root 13 and we are left with root 13 into 3 into now see how we are going to tackle this x raised to the power 4 upon x square what is x raised to the power m upon x raised to the power n apply the law of exponent so this is equal to x raised to the power m minus n so we will be using it for simplifying x raised to the power 4 upon x square so here we get x raised to the power 4 minus 2 so what is the final answer 3 root 13 and x raised to the power 4 minus 2 gives us x square. I hope it is clear to you. So see how we have written. We have written the answer as 3 root 13 x square. Okay, coming to the next one now. The next question uh, is here. This question now. We have to divide. Question number 18. So in the quadrilateral A, B, C, D. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees. And we have to see whether AD is parallel to BC or not. And then justify the answer. Very simple question. So here uh, you are using the properties of uh, parallel lines. Just see how we have done this. Okay, let me discuss now next question. So it says in the quadrilateral ABCD. So ABCD is a quadrilateral. Angle 1 is equal to angle 2 is equal to 90 degree. And we have to check that is AD is parallel to BC or not. And if it is, then we have to justify the answer. Right. So let us uh, begin uh, with the quadrilateral ABCD. So in uh, quadrilateral ABCD, angle 1 plus angle 2 is equal to 90 degrees plus 90 degrees that is 180 degrees now observe carefully if we consider lines ad and bc and ab is transversal so here i'm writing consider ad and bc and ab is transversal so now you tell me what is coming to your mind Wonderful. So here angle A 
and angle B, they are making a pair of co-interior angles. Okay, so co-interior angles. Sum is 90 degrees plus 90 degrees, that is 180 degrees. So what do you conclude? Yes, we say that therefore AD is parallel to BC, right? So here uh, quickly look at this uh, figure ABCD, what we have done. We are given angle 1 and angle 2 as 90 degrees. And you see that the, their sum is 180 degrees and they are making a pair of co-interior angles. Because co-interior angles are supplementary, so AD will be parallel to BC. So that is... Okay, for this particular okay, question, dear students, I have done this uh, uh, explanation here because uh, this question might come for two marks as well. So there will be two value points. So you have to be writing the reason after every calculation okay now coming to question number 19 question number 19 says a cuboidal solid wooden block contains 189 cubic centimeter wood if it be 7 centimeter long and 4.5 centimeter high find its breadth so many of the students have done it correctly so here you see that uh, 189 that is the volume of the wooden block should be equal to uh, L into B into H. L is given to be 7 centimeter. B you have to find out. So you can keep it B as it is. And H is given to be 4.5 centimeter. So equation will be 189 is equal to 7 into B into 4.5. So you can find out B simply. And the answer to this question has come out to be 6 centimeter, right? Okay, coming to the next one. So the next question is uh, question number 20. So question number 20 says, let us uh, see what is question number 20. Yes, it says a letter is chosen from the word geometry. Find the probability that it is a vowel. Very simple. So first you need to count how many total alphabets are there in this geometry so we can see that one two three four five six seven eight and out of these eight how many of them are vowels now how to write in the examination first you will write down the favorable outcomes of vowels are e and o and number of favorable outcomes would be three because you see that in this word geometry two e's are there and one o is there so number of favorable outcomes is 3, total outcomes is 8, and we know that probability is uh, number of favorable outcomes upon total number of outcomes. So the answer for this question is 3 upon 8. So this closes my discussion for section A. So in the next video, I will be sharing uh, insight about some of the value points of section B. Have a nice day. Thank you. Bye-bye.